Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jonathan and today what we're going to be covering is selection sets in 30s Max. Um, now this is a very cool tool that, that, that rhymes. We dig some, we dig some rhyming. Um, very cool tool. It, it's not to be confused with your scene explorer, your layer explorer. Um, this is more for just kind of keeping things organized as you work, as you model, as you create. And it, it just, it, it, it keeps you, it's a time saver. So when you're selecting things, you really only have to select them once and then you can go back to them and um, works great when you're many different things whether you're unwrapping objects or um, just modeling things and you, you know it, it works on a sub object level too which is very beautiful so what I have here is a cool scene filled with cubes, cylinders, spheres and of course teapots because let's be real teapots are just straight up dope you gotta have teapots in your scene um, so let's get to it Right now I'm gonna select my cubes and the selection set dialog is right up here. And we have two ways to get at this. We can simply um, just select this uh, search bar here and we can just type it right up. So let's go cubes. And just by hitting that and hitting enter, we now have a selection set created cubes. So when I select this now, boom, right back to, back to cubes. Now see, this is beautiful when you have, you know, a big scene maybe you have an environment and you know granted sometimes you would have let's revisit your scene explorer uh, you know if you're doing big scenes you're you're gonna want to stay organized in the scene explorer um, anyway so I, you know I'll cover this maybe another time um, if you're not familiar but this this is more for you know on the fly as you're creating things but still it can be handy for whenever you're you have a lot of objects in your current scene so um, let's do another one here before I go off on a tangent, and let's select the spheres. Spheres selected, sir. And we'll hit this little dialog option here. And now we'll go over the buttons here. And what we have is create new set. So if we hit that, it's going to take our selected objects and create a new set. And we can call them spheres because they're not they're not rectangles, right? Um, um, so uh, anyway, we have a couple options here. Now again, we just saw that we can create a new set. We can remove the set we just created. Um, undo doesn't work. So if you do it, it's done. Um, so let's create that one more time. What we have is add uh, selected objects. So I think, let's see here. So if we added a cylinder here, we could actually add that to the selection, which there it is. So we just added that cylinder, cylinder to the spheres. Um, and we can remove subtracted objects. So obviously same thing if we hit that we just removed I believe I believe so or it has to be in scene you're learning I'm learning I suppose <laughs> um, now I want to know there we go I guess we could just right click and remove it I don't know why that button's not working but it should so anyway I'm probably doing something wrong select objects and set so that's cool so if we have a whole set um, you know, it's really just, I, w I would just rock with this. I would just use the drop down. The drop down's handier than going here and using the menu. The menu is more just like if you want to dive a little bit deeper, but right here is fine. I mean, create a set, select a set, pretty straightforward, right? Um, select, select objects by name, and it really just brings your, your select objects by name, hotkey H um, menu. Uh, just another way to get at that. Um, this one I'm not too familiar about. Highlight selected objects. You highlight it, and then it stays highlighted. That one's I'm, I'm, I've kind of dived into. Have to check out documentation for exactly what that does, but it's obviously not incredibly necessary. So I'm rambling. So let's uh, let's just create another selection set here. One more time, and we're rolling with the teapots because teapots are dope. And now, all right, now I'm going to move on real quick. Now, what's really cool is this actually works in a subobject level. So what we're going to do is we're going to add edit poly modifier to it, turn on our wireframe here, and what we can do now is we can go into poly polygon mode and we can select different polygons. Now you can see where this would be handy. Say you're working in something and maybe you're you're you know editing certain topology or whatever you're doing. But there's instances where this comes into play. It comes in comes in handy. Um, or like say say you have a very uh, you know, say you have a complex model and you have a lot of different objects attached to it, and what you can do is select different parts of that and, and create different sets while that's all still uh, attached together. 
So very cool. A lot of different uses for it. Um, it's all in your imagination. It's the key is is it's a time saver. Now, but what you'll see is we if we hit this, we have a different menu. So what this does is it's great because it keeps it completely uh, organized on a whole different level. So now what we can do is let's create. Uh, we'll just say polygons. We'll create another group. We have that group created and boom, you know. And then actually, and then you could actually go like probably create some different ones here. We can go. Uh, we'll just say poly two, and so now we got a couple sets here. And as you can see, we select them, and it's going to revisit our. Oh, sorry. Now I'm just hitting buttons. Like this dude's teaching. He's just crazy, man. Um, so yeah, uh, that's another way. I, I guess. Can you select it this way? You should be able to. You would think. All right. So you still got to select it from the drop down. Uh, however, this is really cool. Now you see we have polygon groups there. Now if we go into vert mode and select a bunch of verts and create that, we'll just say verts one. Verts two. Um, now when we bring this up, you'll see that it's only showing us our vert groups now. So the poly groups are completely on the poly level and edges will be on the edge level as well, um, element level elements borders whatever whatever sub object you're using it's cool that it keeps it in the sub object categories so when I go back to polygon mode it now has um, it, it goes back to polygon uh, selection sets so very cool um, that's about it the rest of this video is just me rambling so very straightforward but you can see where this is handy um, I find it now in my own workflows when I'm working kind of on the fly with things like I don't want to keep selecting the same things or the same polygons or you know very handy, very handy, especially if you're working with, with different polys. and um, it, it works, I guess, similar to ZBrush's um, poly groups, essentially, um, when you're thinking about it on a polygon level. So you can kind of break things down, and you can have all these different selections. Um, it doesn't work function exactly the same, obviously, but the concept's the same as far as selecting and uh, organizing groups on a, on, a, on a mesh. But very cool stuff, guys. I hope that helped. I'm going to wrap this up and bring you future content. So it's been a pleasure, man. Take care.